I'd like to talk about living as sons and daughters of God in this world while not being of the world. I see a lot of confusion surrounding verses such as 1 John 2, 15-16, which I'll read now. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Many times I see this verse and others like it used to mean we can't enjoy anything in the world. Some I know are truly wanting to please the Lord and how they're living, while others simply use it to condemn those they deem as not denying themselves enough as a form of haughty, self-righteous, spiritual one-upmanship. However, these verses are referring to the sin of this world and the sin systems, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. It's these things we are to reject and avoid, not simply all things in the world. We are in the world, we're just not of the world. We don't enjoy or participate in the sinfulness of the world, nor anything which promotes it. For example, I can enjoy a beautiful piece of music played or sung by an artist in the world, just as I can enjoy praise and worship music. If the theme, melody, and lyrics are lovely and wholesome, why wouldn't I enjoy it? Am I not allowed to enjoy it because the artist might not be a Christian? Well, that's silly. The Lord declares that he bestows talent on the righteous and unrighteous alike. But if holy sainthood is the requirement for an artist I'm allowed to listen to, then I couldn't enjoy any music, not even Christian music. Most Christian artists today are simply Christian by name, like most people in the West anyway. And I hear plenty of sinful Christian music with themes of I sin every day and the like. But okay, say holy sainthood is the requirement. Where does it end? Am I not allowed to buy furniture for my house from a furniture maker who isn't holy? I'd love to give a fellow saint my business for his exemplary carpentry, but unfortunately I have yet to meet one. May I not buy my groceries from a grocer who isn't holy? Or my clothes from a non-Christian merchant? See, we're delving into the ridiculous with this line of thinking here. God created the world and things in the world, and He uses those things to bless us with. Yes, we regard everything we have or whatever we enjoy with a light touch, and we don't set our heart on things, which makes sense because nothing lasts and it'll all wither away, but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy them. I see so many so-called Christians who are so pious and holier than thou that they can't even enjoy any blessing that God might want to bless them with for fear they'll look like they love the world. Typically, though, this attitude stems from mere textbooks, pharisaical self-righteousness. Their holiness is based on their efforts and willpower as opposed to Christ living and working through them. And as a consequence, they love turning things into sin which aren't so they can have the self-righteous glory in denying and overcoming it and smugly condemn all who don't conform to their self-made extra-biblical purity. It's because they glory in their righteousness as opposed to His righteousness in them. But as it says in Colossians 2.23, these rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, pious self-denial, and severe bodily discipline, but they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. For example, I've had my accusers condemn me as a sinful worldly hypocrite simply because I own a TV. Of course, they discovered this information and made this accusation through their computer. Who are you to assume someone is using their television for sin? We could make a better assumption about you and your computer or laptop or smartphone. The last I heard, those devices are much more efficient conduits for sin than a television could ever be. So let's not be sin-hunting hypocrites. The Lord bestows blessing on His children in countless ways, whether it be a beautiful piece of music that delights us, or a pretty dress, a day trip to a scenic landscape or historic landmark, fun games to play with the family, interesting stories to experience through literature, screen, or stage, delicious food and drink to savor, subjects to learn and explore, and talents and crafts to practice and refine. Things in the world that give us pleasure, but not sinful pleasure. In our walk with the Lord, we know how to enjoy these things in the world in holiness. I can watch a movie and not sin or rejoice in the sin of others. Jesus told stories depicting sin. The Bible itself is full of stories depicting sin. It's the human experience. Good guys, bad guys, right and wrong. 
And if I'm reading or watching something that I realize is promoting sin or contains gratuitous violence or sin, my heart is just not interested and I, it's easy for me to put it away because I walk with the Lord. But it's not like we can't enjoy the arts. For example, I enjoyed reading Shakespeare from an early age, probably because I grew up with the King James Bible, and so it was easy for me to understand. And although I was able to enjoy many of those works because of their interesting plot lines and thought-provoking dilemmas, it's even more interesting when we have the Holy Spirit. For example, after I read Romeo and Juliet, I didn't come away from it thinking, Be still, my beating heart, this is the love above all love. I came away thinking how truly tragic it was that they looked to suicide rather than trusting the Lord and being victorious. So just because we're not of the world doesn't mean we live in a cloister with stringy hair and dowdy clothing as if purposing ourselves to look bad or remain ignorant to the world is spiritual. We're lights in the world, not of the world, but we're certainly in it. Our light can't shine under a rock. So let's allow the Holy Spirit to lead us rather than the rules and regulations of men. I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.